The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Friday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN just after 9 a.m. Eastern time. We got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading and you got markets in positive territory. This could be the seventh straight day. You're talking about higher prices, man. Across the board, right now you get the S&P up by 10 points at 44.81. Let's put it back to a 10 minute chart. And boy, you back it up, right? Just a week ago, we we're at 42.75. You're talking about 200 points, basically. 200 points in the S&P just in the last week alone as you were coming into a Fed week. 44.81 this morning, yesterday's high, 44.85, so bumping up against that price level. NASDAQ 100, also just under the highs we made yesterday. We just peaked above that level, 15,426. You're up by about a third of a percent. The Dow up by a tenth of a percent, up 37 points at 34,761. And you got the Russell up by one this morning. Crude catching a bid, $71.40. Interesting as crude from Monday's low, 66.80, right? We're at 71.38. I'll give you one of the headlines that I'll be talking about. Are we going to get a slight reversal? Gas prices ease for some summer driving season. And yeah, we're sitting at $71, man. You want some context? Check out that chart. You back crude up for the better part of three years. You're talking about going back to basically two years ago. And we are at the lows that we've seen over the last two years. Yeah, we were at some crazy prices coming out of COVID in the year 2020, et cetera. But nonetheless, the last couple of years, man, we're at low prices, let alone a year ago when crude was hovering above $100. We'll see how that goes, though. Crude up by 50 cents, back above $71 this morning. We jump over to the gold contract, up by $5 at 1975. We were up at 1980 last night. Boy, you talk about some action in the dollar yesterday, right? We had the ECB meeting. The dollar, we almost got a 101 handle from a 103.20 to start the day yesterday, man. You traded down a full point and then some in the dollar this morning. I guess you could say we're slightly positive. You're up by what? Seven basis, seven ticks, seven pennies at 102.19 right now in the dollar. But boy, the market really listening in terms of you jump over to the 10 year, look at that acceleration. 112.16 up to 113.16. So you had the 10-year yesterday. It just didn't stop, man. Those are 10-minute bars from 8.30 in the morning until yeah, 10.40. It was a one-way trip for a full point in the 10-year. You jump over to the dollar index, you zoom in on the action just yesterday, and pretty similar action from 8 o'clock, and even the dollar didn't stop until 2. How about that, right? The dollar just kept going, man. Dollar weakness, you got higher, uh, excuse me, Lower yield, right? Higher price, lower yield, weaker dollar. And the market loved that precipice. And uh, what gets in the way of this market? I don't know right now, man. We're coming into a long weekend. Market's closed on Monday. NYSE is closed. We will be closed as well. Have a great holiday weekend. We got live programming going all the way until 4 o'clock today. Uh, may have one replay. I'm not sure. But we, everybody's going to be back in action on Tuesday, which is the kicker as well. But yeah, the tenure at 113. All right, let's jump around to some of the articles that got pulled up. And we're going to kick it off a little Fed speak. Fed's Waller says fears over a few banks should not alter policy. Well, what if it's more than a few banks, though? What if that's the. Excuse me. Waller says the Fed is using separate tools for financial stability. You're going to get some Fed speak. It's going to be interesting to see what they have to say. Tighter conditions so far, a continuation of prior trends is what you're talking about here. Let me state unequivocally, here's this quote, the Fed's job is to use monetary policy to achieve its dual mandate, which is full employment and price stability, okay? And right now that means raising rates to fight inflation, he said. I do not support altering the stance of monetary policy over worries of ineffectual management at a few banks. So he's, of course, throwing those few banks in there as to the reason why they may potentially be pausing.
It's not like 2007, 2008, where banks were sitting with some really bad toxic assets that were never going to get better. People got scared. They ran. We stepped in, created liquidity facilities, replaced some of that deposit funding. Right now, everything seems to be, seems to be calm in the banking system. And it is nothing like that 2007, 2008, because what can happen is it's a lot different, it's a lot different right, with the, the losses on their books that they're dealing with. Because the Fed could easily just actually take over those treasuries or whatever they have and be made whole. If you go into the commercial real estate side of things, though, that's where things get a little spicy. Because that's where the money they have on the books, they're not getting paid, period, right? The value of those properties is worth less than the loans they have out on them, probably, for some of them, as we get to find that out. So you have a little bit of Fed speak today, and let's talk a little bit about the gas. Why not? So this one we're at the Journal... Americans find relief at the pump ahead of a busy driving season. You talk about the gas prices across the country. Yeah, we got some good prices in Florida. 343. Let's see, hometown Boston, you're looking at 354, Massachusetts at least. Go out to California, 489. What a bargain, man. Alaska above $4. How does that happen, right? California paying almost a full dollar extra over what Hawaii is even paying out there. Excuse me, what Alaska is paying. And even Hawaii, 474. Yeah. California even paying more. Washington, 486. Mississippi, $3. Yeah, so diesel is going down, they talked about in here. And it is, uh, it's interesting to see how this plays out. Gasoline usage lags behind the pre pandemic levels. Excuse me. So we were using 9.3 million barrels a day of motor and aviation gasoline, and we're still at 8.1. Feels like the roads are pretty busy, right? Feels like traffic is back, man. What would be happening if everybody was still doing five days a week? What a reprieve that is on some of the roads and infrastructure that we need, right? That people are working from home. And I think we can all attest, no matter where you are, Traffic is back, man, and, and it's remarkable to see those numbers that we're actually using less. Uh, dropped to 8.1 in 2020. We're at 8.8 .8 in 2022, but you're talking about still. I mean, think about it. That's the average from 2016 to 2019 was 9.3 million barrels a day. We're still under that number, and we're coming into the later part of 2023. So we'll see where gas prices go from there. Now, this is going to be an interesting one. Uh, I'm going to tease this one, not the Disney one. We'll talk about that as well. But student loan repayments, how is this going to factor to everything? You want to talk about some numbers, man. 26.6 million people, about 10% of the adult population, are basically going to get a new bill every month that they have not gotten in the last three years. That's going to have to matter, right? Uh, and those are the people that it may matter the most, of course in terms of impacting purchases they're making elsewhere. If you're somebody with a student loan and you've had that in forbearance, you are potentially one of the people that's probably on the cusp where inflation is crushing you the hardest. If you have a student loan, you're choosing to put that into forbearance. And what it talks about is 17% of the adult population have federal student debt. Of those borrowers, about 26.6 .6 million, or 10% of the adult population had loans in forbearance as of the first quarter. And guess what? That pause is ending August 30th. You got a summer and that's it. And yeah, I imagine that's going to matter coming into the new year. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome. Excuse me. Welcome back, folks. We have the S&P up by 12 points right now, 4482, just off the highs of yesterday, 4485. So we're talking about student loan repayments that are coming back August 30th. You're talking about one out of every 10 adults mammoth numbers when you think about it in that context but boy it gets even bigger than that so you talk about in repayment the blue versus in forbearance these are a number of federal student loan borrowers in rebearance um, repayment in forbearance you see what happened of course during covid but check out these numbers okay and yes i think that what biden did is is probably not going to be upheld by the supreme court but that doesn't matter anyway because these are probably these are coming back as a part of the debt deal. Okay, it would just be whether they're all coming back, whether people get that ten thousand dollars cleared away, etc. And whether it's right or wrong, my preference, if it matters, which it doesn't in some contexts, but it does because all of our preferences matter collectively to basically the government being us, right? Is that it's a dicey deal when one person, whether you agree with Biden, whether you agree with Trump, when they start doing things like that on their own. And just deciding to clear out federal debt of $10,000 unilaterally one person, that gets pretty dicey, man, in my opinion. Um, listen, and Trump was handing out tax cuts, man. Nobody stood out to him. That was crazy, too. If a Democrat ever during the pandemic was just sending cash checks out to everybody, that's not a good thing either. Uh, Congress could have been able to do that. Nonetheless, we digress, okay? Let's get into the numbers that matter. Here we go. The hit to household cash flows as a result of the resumption could be substantial. Bank of America... Institute estimates it might be around $180 a month. That doesn't sound that bad, right? Wait. For the median impacted household, okay, these numbers jump around. So they're giving you a few reference points. In a 2017 survey conducted by the Fed, the median monthly student loan repayment was $220 and the average was $393. Estimates vary, but even on a conservative expectation 
Borrowers are set to collectively resume paying five to eight billion dollars a month. That's the conservative. Okay. Some research outfits, including J.P. Morgan and T.D. Cowan, place the number closer to ten billion. Five to ten billion dollars a month, probably closer to eight to ten, probably maybe in the eight ten, something like that. Right. Okay. There's your reasonable number. What's ten billion dollars a month in the context of what re- people spend on retail? Folks, it's mammoth. For context, Americans collectively spend about $35 billion a month on clothing and department stores, according to data from the Census Bureau. So think about that, right? Americans spend $35 billion a month on clothing and department stores. And all of a sudden, Americans collectively, one out of every 10 adults, are going to be responsible for about $10 billion in payments on a monthly basis that they were not responsible for for the last three years. And that's a long time, folks. It's a long time as in you get used to not having those payments. If you got to skip a loan payment for a month or two or something like that, you don't recalibrate your life, right? You skip it for three years through the pandemic, post-pandemic. We're coming into August of 2000, excuse me, 23 you've probably recalibrated your life to a certain degree that you are no longer calculating that monthly payment as a necessity and you've come to spend that money in other areas of life deeming that a necessity. Nonetheless, man, those numbers really stick out. It's a huge one. Um, yeah, the return of student loan payments is a much larger collective wallet impact compared with the end of the pandemic era enhanced food stamp benefits, which took away around $3 billion of additional assistance a month. Think about these things, right? So the end of such government relief can have an immediate impact. Dollar Tree, for example, noted on its last earnings call that the reduction in those food stamp benefits, which was $3 billion a month, right, led consumers to focus more on needs rather than wants. Its family dollar brand saw same-store sales of discretionary goods decline 4.4% in the quarter compared to a year earlier. And that was with a $3 billion hit. And that's the bottom echelon, of course, when you're talking about Fairly Dollar, you're talking about Dollar Tree. Uh, but the average student loan borrower is younger, more likely to be single, female, and earn slightly less than the average U.S. consumer. 62% are 39 or younger, and that group owed 55% of total student debt as of 2021. Yeah. Share of credit card debt balance that is transitioning to serious delinquency 90 days or more. And look at the numbers in young people, man. 18 to 29. You talk about some spikes here and look where we can get to. Right. Yeah. So that's a dicey one for sure. And keep your eye on it. That starts at the end of the summer. Yeah, and it, it, of course it's young people. The cost of education, man, is crazy, right? I mean, I was fortunate to have an amazing education. I went to an amazing high school in Denham, Massachusetts, Noble and Greeno. Went to an outstanding university, Villanova University, outside of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And you can't put a price on education, but unfortunately you can put a price on education because there's an opportunity cost that goes along with it. That's what happens there. There's an opportunity cost, right? So the the price you can always put on something is an opportunity cost. And the opportunity cost for some of the prices of the education going on is so large that, you know, you get to the degree. I mean, folks, Tommy right now is two years old. So I think of where prices are going to be for education when he is, of course, 18 years old. And 16 years from now, when you talk about the year 2040, you talk about a college education, you could run easily in the hundreds of thousands of dollars, and who knows what that's going to be equivalent to at that time. But right now, even, you're talking about people taking on levels of debt, 200, dollars $400,000 of debt, when there's a lot you could do with that money that may impact your life in a much more beneficial manner, especially if you have to take out the debt for it. It's one thing that, you know, maybe you're fortunate and listen, one of one of the things, maybe I'll talk about it, you know, after this break and I will, I'll reference it. If you're in Florida, folks, Florida prepaid is an outstanding deal for kids. You can prepay your education. If you have the ability to do it, whether you can put that payment on a monthly, yearly or either one time payment. You go in-state tuition in Florida, and I'll pull it up because it's a tremendous deal. If you have kids out there, you got grandkids in there, you want to look at it, 
it at least gives them the option because 16 years from now, you got a two-year-old, 18 years old, where is education going to be? For reference, folks, for Tommy, you can lock in a four-year university. I think it's like $28,000 right now, $27,000 paid today, guarantees him four years in-state university. There's a number of universities that qualify. Uh, Florida University is one of them. Florida State, I think, is in there. You can do different types. You can do a two-year college application um, to some degree. But the cool part is, is that let's say Tommy turns 18. He decides he doesn't want to go to Florida. Maybe he wants to go to Villanova like me. Maybe he wants to go to Boston College or Harvard up in Boston. You can take the value of that money and use it elsewhere if you want to. The kicker, though, is that by using it in Florida, you get in-state tuition, which is the huge it obviously value add. I mean, I think right now University of Florida is like $6,000 a year in state or something like that. Tremendous value if you get some great in state universities. But yeah, it's it's out of whack, man, with the, the amount of debt a lot of people have. It's coming back at the end of August and it's $10 billion a month, and people only, only spend $35 billion in clothing and department stores. Not a lot of people know that, I think. That is a big one, to say the least. Stay tuned, folks. Markets. We're going to see 4,500 on the S&P futures. We're within about 11 points. Come on back, folks. It's Friday. Coming into a long weekend. We'll be back for the open. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks. We got markets open. You got an S&P up by 18 points, up another four tenths percent. Quite the run that we are on, man. Right now, you dip below uh, that print on the open, but 44.93, a new recent high. NASDAQ 100 inching towards a new recent high as well, up to 15,475. You get the Dow up 83 points. Yeah, within a stone's throw of 35,000 in the Dow, and you get the Russell up by eight right now. You jump over to crude. We just were so above 70 bucks, excuse me, above $71 when I started off the program. Back below that number, $70.77. You jump to gold, pulling back a bit to 1970. I imagine we have some action going on in currencies, right? Nah, no real huge reaction. I was expecting a little bit more of a pop than that if we were getting some action in gold, but not happening. You get a little bit of a gold pop down to 1969 in terms of a pop lower i was thinking maybe you would have a little bit of dollar strength and it's not even happening so you have gold trading lower s p's up by 17 let's jump around to some of the fang stocks look at apple man 187.50 what is the number on they got 16 almost billion shares outstanding wow look how close we are 2.93 so what do they need they need 70 billion dollars they need about four dollars. Yeah, almost five dollars. One ninety-one close to is going to be the number. Something like that, just out of my head on Apple, right near that number, man. Uh, but guess what? We trade a little bit lower on the open. They get back some bit. We jump over to Microsoft. Look at that run yesterday, man. Look at this run Microsoft is on. Doesn't mean it's going to stop anytime soon, folks, but we got Microsoft above the highs. We got Apple above the highs. And you did it all in, in, in less than six months, as in you got it all back on Microsoft in less than six months, right? This thing trades from 350 down to 220 over about the period of a year. And within six months, you get it all back. And longer picture. And look at the run this thing is on. Pretty remarkable. NASDAQ 100, pretty similar action. You're within about 1,300 points. I mean, NASDAQ 100, man, you did a, some context here. The COVID run, yeah, you did a full 618. I mean, think about it. The NASDAQ 100 traded up 10,000 points from the COVID lows, gave back a 618 in the entire move, and we're almost back to that high. 10,000 points from the COVID lows. You came into 2020, okay, at about 9,000. So even in that context, pre-COVID, and that's after the run that we had in terms of coming in at 9,000, but you traded from 4,200 in the beginning of 2016. Here's some wild, wild things going on in this market, man. Might be getting a little parabolic here when you look at these longer term charts, right? Look at the run Apple's on, man. Apple just added a trillion dollars in market cap, essentially, to where it was at the beginning of the year. So I know there's optimism, but boy, be careful. As you jump around to those charts, it's an interesting one. Uh, global stocks head for the best week since March. Now, listen, you can't overstate it. I agree. Chairman Powell, they're hoping inflation comes under control here. Because if they were really worried and they thought they had two more hikes coming down the line, they probably would have hiked this meeting or they would have been a little bit more adamant that maybe they're coming back in July and they're probably going to hike. But all he did is he called it a live meeting and the numbers are going to shape that and we'll see where we go. There's a lot of cash on the sidelines and we should not underestimate the investor's willingness to step in. I'd agree with that one, man. It's going to be so interesting to see how things play out with so much money sitting in money market funds, sitting in CDs. Um, that are going to be coming up, right? And as rates drop, those are going to become less attractive potentially to the market. And then the housing. You get into housing. I mean, the, let's jump to the home builders. Jump to Lennar, making new highs, up another percent today. DR Horton, up another 1.1 percent today, right near the highs. We jump over to Lennar. Now, this one's an interesting one to think about. What happens if this is the beginning of the Fed pausing? And even let's fast forward a year to 18 months to where they really start a cutting cycle, okay? Let's just say that it takes that long. A lot of people think it's not going to take that long, right? Inflation's going to roll over. The economy's going to get hit in the next six months, and the Fed's going to start 
cutting at the beginning of next year. I mean, Chairman Powell said something like a couple of years in his press conference, something like that. Let's just say it takes a year to a year and a half before they start cutting. What's going to happen to the home builders in particular? Because the housing market, of course, that should help because it's going to allow your signature to be worth more money. So if you're willing to pay 2800 bucks a month for rent, if you're willing to pay $3,000 per month for a lease, uh, for a mortgage, well, it's just going to increase the value. Maybe you were able to afford a $350,000 house prior with a $3,000 mortgage payment. Maybe that now goes up to a $400,000 property as interest rates come down. That's the square math of it, right? But how does it impact home builders in particular? I've been starting to think about this one because, and I'm not even talking about smaller private builders, like maybe even my dad building out in St. Pete. I'm talking about these home builders that have capitalized so well off of what's going on because of the huge supply crunch where they have vast amounts of land. They build huge plots. I've talked about the building going on next to me. You have Lennar and DR Horton, okay? They are both building, literally right next to me in Lakeland, Florida. I think the development is something like 1,500 homes. 1,500. They're building a city, man. They are building two cities, practically. They just keep popping them out on the street. People keep moving into them. They're the only game in town right now. And it seems easy in hindsight, right? But nobody's selling their house when they have a mortgage at 3 to 4% when the next one they have to get is potentially 7%. What happens when rates go down to a little bit more affordable? The people who might not be willing to sell their house right now, then guess what? That supply is going to come on. There's going to be a double-edged sword. They're also going to benefit, just like I talked about, in terms of that person being able to pay more with the same monthly payment. So they could, in theory, charge more for their homes while offering people the same monthly payment for their mortgage. But there is a supply shortage of current homes that if that comes back, you're going to have a lot of people who feel like they can't sell right now. And I'm going big picture here, right? Going, you know, years down the line, when we get a shift from the interest rates we're at now, even if they come down a couple percentage points to really allow people potentially, right, to sell their home, buy a different home. Maybe they're comfortable getting in at 4.75% on the new home, something that doesn't feel like you're getting robbed by giving up a 4% mortgage and having to go get a 7% mortgage. The flood of people that may flood the market there, something to keep in mind um, on the horizon. Doesn't mean it's gonna kill the market, but it does put a cap on things, especially for the home builders to some degree. I think they have some room to run even from here, but it is something to think about big picture because they are the only game in town and eventually that's gonna change, man. Eventually, rates are going to come back down as inflation gets under control. And then people will be able to potentially sell their homes again, who right now don't plan on doing that at all. Nonetheless, today, higher prices across the board, man. S&P up by 10, NASDAQ up by 17, Dow up 72, Russell flat. Stay tuned, folks. One more. Uh, we got a couple more segments. I'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, 
bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We got markets in the positive. We got the Russell basically flat to negative by one point. S&P's up by eight. We jump over to Disney. Disney negative by a percent. Look at that drop off to 91.90 there. And so Disney, um, yeah, they have their finance chief, CFO. I think that's who it is. Now, she was critical in Chappie getting ousted, I believe, as well. Christine McCarthy has taken a family medical leave. Move catches associates by surprise. Her husband has been in a healthcare facility, unfortunately, since the start of the year. So he's dealing with something. So she's got some family medical going on for sure. The abrupt exit caught some colleagues and associates by surprise. Uh, she's been a little bit of a thorn here in the in the side of Iger and others, including the amount of money Disney spends on content and recent restructuring. She felt did not go far enough to streamline the company. It's probably as simple as, you know, she's facing some obstacles at work. She's got a husband in the hospital, and maybe it's just not worth it at that degree. Uh, not sure she got pushed out to that degree, but it is interesting when you have an executive that clashes with somebody like Iger, right? And then they're stepping away. Uh, McCarthy pushed for the Disney Entertainment Unit to be further consolidated, okay? So Iger came in. He created three main units, one for the parks, one for consumer products, and another for ESPN and a Disney entertainment unit that houses movie and television operations as well as streaming services, Disney Plus and Hulu. She wanted the entertainment unit to be further consolidated to improve profit margins and give Disney a leaner structure more akin to Netflix. And that put her at odds with some of the leadership there. Uh, nonetheless, Disney, man, it's a tough one. Now, yeah, we'll leave it at that. Uh, in the market, we get back some of those gains, man. A little bit of a quick drop off from 44.92 down to 44.75. All things considered, folks, we're through the stratosphere right now. Right? I mean, I'm not sure what else to say. You go back three months ago, and you're up 600 S and P points. More than that, yeah. 600 S&P points if you if you don't include the gap away on the futures, which you usually get of about 30, 40, 50 points, something like that, on terms of the rollover from contract to contract since we're looking at the futures. Let's check out some of the FANG stocks as we get a little bit of a sell-off to kick off the Friday going into a long weekend. Apple shares down four-tenths percent. Microsoft shares down about two-tenths percent. We jump over to Google. Yeah, Google's a different... <coughs> Excuse me, Google's a different story, man. If you have Google, I mean, I I say I'd be careful. It, it's 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 underperforming its peers, in my opinion, right now. I mean, you just saw where Google, where Microsoft, and Apple are. 
Google's not even close to its high of 153. You're $30 off of that high. You're still 20% pullback from the highs. Google compared to Microsoft compared to Apple. Google's been plowing money into AI and they haven't gotten nearly the benefit that Microsoft has seen. And if anything, AI is going to allow Microsoft to eat Google's lunch when it comes to search, et cetera, with the likes of ChatGPT. Yeah, let's see how Tesla's trading. Tesla positive with the market today. I got the channel lines on there. That's a decent breakout, man. Tesla's still 150 bucks off of the highs of that company. So that's got some ways to go. Speaking of companies with ways to go, Amazon down a percent today as the market sells off a bit. Amazon 125.76 down a dollar 37, and you talk about off the highs of 190. Let's check out some of the retailers. Walmart held up so well, man. Look at this, it got it all back basically in a year from that drop off. You got a company like Walmart go from 160 down to 120, and it gets it all back just like that. Target shares, not quite the same scenario, and they are two different stores, man. Target. I was listening to Fast Market talking about them. I think this week as well. Target. I spent a lot of time in Target, man. It is like a, a home goods store, right? Their grocery section, especially their refrigerated grocery section, is a joke, straight up. I mean, you're talking about nothing. They basically put it in there. You got a few bananas, you got some fruit, you got a few pieces of chicken, maybe a few pieces of beef. You have more than that, okay? You have yogurt. But it is a very tiny portion of their store versus a company like Walmart that does substantial groceries uh, along with other staples versus discretionary that you have at a company like Target. We got a little bit of a sell-off, all things considered. Look at that weekly bar that we're talking about in the S&P, though, folks, right? I mean, you just gave up 24 points in the S&P, but all you're doing is, whoops, excuse me, zooming out, is you're back to where we were trading at 2.45 in the afternoon yesterday. Okay, so we're at some lofty levels. I wouldn't expect some huge sell-off today. Euphoria is high. We're coming into a long weekend. People got Monday off uh, for the holiday. It's summer. It's June. Uh, and it's, it's Father's Day as well, which is pretty cool that we got a long weekend on top of that on Father's Day. Yeah, so I wouldn't expect some kind of huge sell-off here. Let's jump over to the VIX. Do we have some fear in this market? 1451, slightly elevated, but all things considered, relatively low volatility index with what you have going on. But yeah, it's an interesting week that you reach the end of a 15-month hiking cycle in the Fed, right? Let's check in on the dollar index. Yeah, dollars, the, the Fed, the, the the market has made up its mind, at least for right now, folks, that they did not believe Chairman Powell that they were going to come out with the hawkish statement. They paused. He wasn't strong enough in his wording that they think that they might be trying to let this go. And when he said, because somebody asked a great question, I've been talking about it, we're only going to get really one month of data out to their next week meeting. Let's get their schedule. It's late July. Yeah, July 25th and 26th is their next meeting. So during that time, you're going to get the month of June data. But then what happens is, is that you go to the next meeting is September 19th and 20th. Well, during that time, you're going to get July's data and you're going to get August data. So when they asked the question, they said, well, you're going to be data dependent the next meeting in July, you're really only going to get the June data, right? You're going to get June non-farm payrolls. You're going to get June CPI. You're going to get some other data, but that's all you're going to get. He said, "Well, we're going to take, we're going to take more than that. We're going to take two, three months of data." Well, if that's the case, they might be going pause there too, because the numbers might be nice to them when you're talking about some of the comps you're dealing with from the numbers we get in June which would allow them to say, we're going to pause one more meeting. We're going to skip one more meeting in July, and then we'll see where we go. Well, that's when the data really matters, I guess, September 19th and 20th, because if they're where they are right now, and we're not going to get that much data before July, I mean, it's going to be interesting to see what some of the Fed speakers have to say. And I think that's what the market's at least figured out for right now. And now it's uh, the Fed's job to correct them. Right, Chairman Powell could come out and correct him. He's probably going to be speaking before that July meeting at some point, and we'll see if he does. But as for right now, the market's going to take it, run with it. And then you had the ECB yesterday, who seemed especially hawkish, and Christine Lagarde left no room saying 
yes, they're very likely to raise in July. Chairman Powell could have said that. He did not. And I think that's where really things started to shift yesterday. You saw the Fed decision. But I think market participants saw the way that Chairman Powell handled the press conference talking about the next meeting versus the way the ECB, that's only at 3.5% right now, handled addressing how they'll come in to the next meeting. Quite a difference. And we might be at 5.1 for a while, but not sure we're going to get many more hikes unless we really need it. We'll see if it plays out. One more segment, folks. Don't go away. We'll be right back. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with the Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In the Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den and Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders just visit the front page of tfnn.com you might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market you're going to need a crystal ball after all it's impossible to predict the future right like any endeavor in life before you decide it's impossible get some advice from the experts you might find that it's not so impossible after all for daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call Newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call Newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We have the S&Ps basically flat. You're positive by one point right now. Trading at 44.72. NASDAQ barely in the red off 31 points. You get the Dow up by nine. The Russell negative by four. You jump to gold. Gold contract up by $2 at 19.72 this morning. You got the crew contract basically flat. We'll call it on the session. You were above 71 bucks right now. You're at 70.87. You got to keep your eye on the dollar index after the move yesterday. The calm, the calm after the storm. And boy, I mean, you look at back this thing up to Monday, we were pushing 104. We just almost got a 101 handle. You trade down almost two full points in the dollar index. We're at 102.16. You look where we were on Monday on yields, right? You had a little bit of volatility, but not quite the same scenario. As in, you were all the way up to almost 114. You were down to 112. But considering where we were at the beginning of the week, you're talking about basically within about eight ticks in the tenure. So yes, yields have changed. 
but really a huge reaction in the dollar index on the heels of our Fed and the ECB as well. We check out some of those FANG stocks. Amazon shares sell off on the open, man. We had a little bit of a sell off on the open, but not surprising considering the run that we've been on. Apple off about half a percent. We jump over to AI. NVIDIA shares, what well, you talk about a rocket ship, still up a percent. AMD, a little bit of a different story. Yeah, down 2.3% for AMD shares. Let's see how some of the airlines are trading. American, look at the run that they've been on, man. Look at that run. So what does that back it up to? That's May 24th. Boy, quite a run for these airlines, right? American from 13 bucks in May up to 16.62. We jump over to Delta. Whew. Let's see if JetBlue, even JetBlue catching the bid. I will say. And United. Yeah, look at that, man. Let's see those cruise ships. Look at these cruise ships. Yeah, that could be a breakout. I've talked about it before. And let's check out Norwegian. Travel on the rise, everything on the rise in these markets. Well, folks, thanks so much for tuning in to start your Friday off. Please have a great weekend. Have a safe weekend. Enjoy it. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there. Folks, no drunk driving. Plan for it. Take an Uber. Do what you need to do. Don't get behind that wheel if you have too many cocktails. Life is too beautiful. It's too much fun. We'll see you back here on Tuesday. And stay tuned, folks. We got Basil. He's coming up next. Have a great weekend, everybody. We'll see you on Tuesday.